In the first video on fixed income securities, we defined a bond as a tool for borrowing money in financial markets. There I promised you that as we move on, we will make things more concrete. And we'll start doing that with an alternative bond definition that will give us a bit more context. So a bond is a financial instrument, specifically we say that it is a fixed income or debt security. Actually, in the first video, we went a bit further than that, and we said that bonds are the most common type of fixed income or debt securities. So as I was saying, a bond is a financial instrument that allows an entity, and that entity is the issuer of the bond, to raise an amount of money for a specific purpose. We already mentioned corporations and sovereign governments as examples of entities issuing bonds. And for now, we'll once again stick to these two. Now, what could the specific purpose for issuing bonds be? It could be expanding in new markets. For example, you can imagine a corporation based in Nigeria that after running an analysis, it determined that it would be significantly profitable to expand in China, but it currently lacks the funding to do so. So it could borrow the required funds by issuing bonds. Now you might be wondering, why can't the corporation go, for example, to a bank and obtain a loan instead of issuing bonds? One possible answer to that question could be that bank financing through a loan is not available. In other words, there's no bank that is willing to lend the funds to the corporation. There could be other reasons as well, and we'll certainly discuss about them when we get into the videos on a firm's capital structure in the corporate finance section. Simply put, the capital structure has to do with how a firm finances its operations, or in general, how it finances its assets. For the time being, the main takeaway for you is that financing through issuing bonds is but one of the alternative ways for a firm to finance itself. In general, a given firm will choose the sort of financing that is least costly, but there are other factors that get into the game as well, such as the firm's general philosophy or strategy. Moving on, I prepared this graph to give you a general idea of what the process of issuing bonds entails. Starting from the left, we've got the issuers of bonds, who are the borrowers of funds. Going back to our previous example, we can think of the Nigerian-based corporation as the issuer. Moving to the right, we've got our intermediaries that will facilitate in order for the issue to take place. And of course, they will not do it for free. They will receive compensation in the form of fees for their work. And these intermediaries are typically investment banks. Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, this stands for Bank of America, and Deutsche Bank, to name a few. I would say that Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs are purely or almost purely investment banks, whereas the other two maintain investment banking units, but are involved in other types of banking services as well. So the Nigerian company will get in touch with an investment bank or a syndicate of investment banks to undertake the issue. And by syndicate, I mean a group of investment banks. For the sake of this example, let's say that it gets into an arrangement with Morgan Stanley. Now the tasks to be completed by Morgan Stanley can involve a number of things. To give you an idea, Morgan Stanley will run an analysis to determine the demand for the bonds to be issued. And this demand will of course form the basis for the initial price of the bonds. If everything goes according to plan, once the bonds are issued by Morgan Stanley on behalf of the Nigerian corporation, they will be sold to investors, who act as the corporation's lenders. Of course, investors will buy the bonds, in other words, invest in these bonds, under the expectation that they will receive the number of payments that these bonds promise to make in the future. And when they enter this transaction, they expect those payments to exceed the initial amount invested, so that they would get a positive return on their investment. Otherwise, they wouldn't have an incentive to invest in these bonds. And as you can see, I use these arrows that face in both directions to show you the interaction between the various parties involved. So to summarize, investors will buy the Nigerian corporation's bonds, and in doing so, 
they will lend it money. The Nigerian corporation will use that money to expand in Chinese markets. Ideally, this expansion will be indeed profitable and a portion of the profits collected by the corporation will be used to repay its lenders, in this case the bondholders. I will conclude this video with the following. The purpose of this graph is for you to look at the big picture. In the real world, there are other considerations, and those considerations affect, among others, how the funds move from one party to the other. For now, getting into those issues is not that important. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.